Hello, instructors, and welcome to the YouTube pre-recorded presentation regarding AED basics. We're going to be covering some basic science regarding AEDs, basic maintenance, and also how to refer your customers to purchase an AED. First, we'd like to take you through the purpose of our presentation and a few important advisory notes. Please remember the content of this AED Basics presentation is not to be used to teach Red Cross courses. It's required that we all teach to the standard and stick to the bullet points and curriculum outlined in our instructor manuals. The intention of the guidance we're providing to you today is to ensure that all instructors are equipped with the uniform rationales and clarifications that will help them in delivering the instructor manual bullet points, activities, and skill practices. So a little bit about AEDs and how they relate to cardiac arrest. An AED, or automated external defibrillator, is used to deliver a shock, also known as defibrillation, to a victim suffering from sudden cardiac arrest, or SCA. Usually sudden cardiac arrest happens when the heart has an irregular or chaotic rhythm and it doesn't allow blood to pump around the body. The most common irregular heart rhythm is known as defib or ventricular fibrillation. And during this activity, although the heart may be moving, it's not allowing blood to move around the body. Because there's little or no blood flow during cardiac arrest, the victim becomes unresponsive, they have no detectable pulse, and they stop breathing. The only definitive treatment to restore an effective heart rhythm from the most common cause of sudden cardiac arrest is defibrillation. Now, CPR is the most benefit when it's used in combination with an AED. Now, what is the purpose of the shock? The purpose of the shock is to interrupt irregular rhythm. So the shock is there to halt the chaotic activity so that the heart can return to a normal rhythm on its own. So the purpose of the shock is to reset the heart so that you could stop the irregular activity and hopefully it goes back to a normal rhythm on its own. We like to look at how safe are AEDs to use. They can be a bit threatening because they're, they're new, they're different. AEDs are designed to deliver a shock only to someone who is suffering from the most common cause of cardiac arrest. The AED searches for a shockable rhythm in the victim before delivering a shock. When used properly with the appropriate precautions and training, AEDs are simple to operate and they pose no risk to either the rescuer or the victim. Typically, the AED will not advise you to provide a shock if the victim has an effective cardiac rhythm or if the victim has no electrical activity. Now, how does this apply to our Red Cross courses? We know that in our instructor manual, we can find the topic of the AED in Lesson 3 and also in Chapter 3 of the Participant's Manual. We're only allotted about 27 minutes to cover the topic, play the videos, and to do the skill session. So make sure that you're concise and efficient and follow your outline and don't get too technical when you're discussing the AED. Stay inside of the bullet points that are in your instructor manual. Included as part of your instructor manual is a course activity entitled AED Factor Fiction. This is part of Lesson 3 and it requires you to go over the Factor Fiction activity prior to the playing of the AED video and prior to conducting the skill session. So let's go over the first fact or fiction question together. So question number one, sudden cardiac arrest is the same as a heart attack. Is that fact or fiction? Well, the answer to this question is it's fiction. A heart attack is when the cardiac muscle becomes damaged due to a lack of oxygen and part of the heart will become diseased. It may still be able to pump blood through the body, whereas cardiac arrest is when the heart doesn't pump blood around the body at all due to an irregular rhythm. So the answer to activity page question one is fiction. Let's talk a little bit about the maintenance of AEDs. The great thing about AEDs is they have a long battery life and each model performs its own comprehensive daily, weekly, and monthly self-assessment to make sure that it's ready for use. Some of them have visual or audio indicators to allow us to see or hear if an AED is running properly. So you might see a little X if it's not running properly, or you might see a blinking green light if it's running properly. 
80 pads do need replacing normally every two years, so you'll see the expiration date right on the package. And most AED batteries can last anywhere from four to five years, depending on the model. Now let's take a closer look at the use of our AED trainers and talk about how the AED trainers work that we use in the classroom. The Red Cross has several models of AED trainers used in the classroom. Some are very specific models, but they can all provide a general overview of what an AED does and how an AED is used. All AED trainers should have an on-off button, adult and pediatric pads available for use, and they have various features that provide prompts for our participants to follow during the skill checks. Now, we do have a best practice when it comes to conducting skill sessions. In most cases, we want to avoid the confusion of having too many AED trainers talking at the same time. So what we can do is we can have one AED providing all of the voice prompts that are from the trainer, and then we can have the instructor provide additional prompts. This will allow you to control the pace of the practice in case you need to um, intervene any of the practice of the participants. So all of the other AED trainers, while they're practicing, will remain silent, and you have one that is providing voice prompts. Okay, we've gone over quite a bit of information. Now we're going to put it all together, and we're going to go over the AED do's and don'ts. The AED do's. Make sure that you double check all of the AEDs to make sure they're working properly and that you have pads that have adhesive that is still sticky. And also, make sure that you conduct the AED fact for fiction as a group activity prior to playing the AED video segment. If you get information about a full service course in regards to using a specific model, work with your training team to make sure that you get that specific training AED model so that you can work um, with that uh, model and provide it for the training with the client. Now, when you're doing the AED practice, make sure that you allow the participants to get the feel of two full minutes of CPR during their practice. And if you're doing AED adult practice, make sure that the participants use adult pads. And if you're doing pediatric practice for the child and infant, make sure that they are using pediatric pads. And make sure that all of your um, participants and customers get the idea of the importance of purchasing an AED for the facility if they don't already have one. And if you ever get stumped by a question in the classroom, look at your frequently asked questions in the back of the instructor manual in regards to AEDs. Well, now that we've looked at the AED do's, let's take a closer look at the AED don'ts. First, do not try to install a live AED if a full-service, contracted customer asks you to do so. Please instead refer them to their PHSS sales representative. Do not agree to check a full-service client's live AED for functionality. Again, please refer them to their PHSS sales representative. Do not place AED pads on any live person, participants, or instructors. Do not use a live AED to conduct training practice sessions or to provide demonstrations. Do not play the Hearts Electrical System bonus video. This is a wonderful tool, but it's meant for the instructor's background knowledge. And do not over-explain anatomy, physiology, or use any technical terms that are not in the instructor's manual. This can leave confusion to your participants and maybe lead for a longer class with unnecessary questions. Let's say you have a customer that's interested in buying an AED. What do we do? We always want to make sure that we get them connected to a local PHSS sales representative or account manager. Um, you can also inform your scheduler about the interest by making sure that you fill out the after action report. This way we can keep sales informed of the opportunity and provide them the customer's contact information. It's sales that will determine what the best AED will fit that customer's needs, including um, if they need to purchase more than one AED or a particular model for the facility and um, the population that they have at that location. 
And also, if they need any replacement equipment, like batteries or pads or other AED supplies and accessories, that is also something that our PHSS sales representatives and account managers can assist with. Let's take a closer look at what AED models the Red Cross sells. The four AED brands that the Red Cross sells are AEDs manufactured by Cardiac Science, Philips, Physio Control, and Zoll. Also, we have additional accessories that are available for our customers, and including pads and batteries. And also, we have other features like cabinets and cases or signage so that the facility staff members know where the AED is. From time to time, you may receive a special request to use a specific AED training model. Normally, we're using the Red Cross Training AED brand as a generic training AED model to conduct our skill sessions. If there's a special request from a full-service off-site client to use a specific AED model or brand for training, you'll find this information provided to you on the full-service training agreement. Be sure to review your training agreement carefully and reach out to your training specialist or your logistics support staff member to discuss any special arrangements and device instructions you need to meet the need and request of our customer. So there you have it. We covered the basic science of AED use, cardiac emergencies, as well as some of the classroom best practices when conducting AED practice. And also, now we know what to do if a customer wants to buy an AED. Uh, so make sure that if you have any questions, refer them to your training specialists. In addition to that, this is training number three of three for September 2014 YouTube session. Make sure that you remember that your attendance code for this session is learning. Uh, the prior two videos to this will have um, code number one and code number two. Once you put all three codes together, you'll get a passphrase that you can email to your training specialist for attendance credit. Thank you so much again for participating and have a great day.